All we have to do is look on at the, the disciples, the apostles on the day of Pentecost and what they did. Amen. Let's see how the apostles acted on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost was poured out upon them. We can go to Acts 2, chapter 1 through 4. Acts 2, chapter... Acts verse? chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Yes. At nang dumating nga ang araw ng Pentecostes, silang lahat ay nang nagkakatipon sa isang dako. At biglang dumating mula sa langit ang isang hugong na gaya ng isang humahagibis na hangin malakas at pinuno ang buong bahay ng kanilang kinaupuan. At sa kanila ay may napakitang mga bilang kawangis ng apoy na nagkabahabahagi at dumapo sa bawat isa sa kanila. At silang lahat ay nangapuspus ng Espiritu Santo at nangagpasimulang magsalita ng iba't ibang wika ang sa pinagkakalob ng Espiritu na kanilang salitain. Yes. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance for the ability. Hallelujah. Praise God. So they spoke, after this, they spoke also in other languages. And there were Jewish immigrants there watching. There in Jerusalem. They came from other countries and spoke different languages and heard them speaking their own language where they were from. Hallelujah. So this is what happened after they heard them speaking the other languages. If we go to verse 12, same chapter, and 13. At silang lahat ay nangagtaka at nangalito na sinasabi ng isa't isa, Anong kahulugan ito? Dagapuan ang mga iba'y nangangglilibak na nangagsasabi, sila'y puno ng bagong alak. Amen. So they were, they thought they were drunk. They thought they were laughing. They thought they'd been drinking new wine. Hallelujah. But why would they think this? Does wine make you speak in other languages? If I, can I speak, uh, you know, Ilocano very well, which I don't know, any Ilocano. I drink uh, some wine. Am I going to learn other languages? No, of course not. So what made them think that they were drunk? Why did they think they were drunk? Hallelujah. It's because what drunk people, what do they usually do? How do they do? They act. What do they do? They fall over. They lay on the ground. They yell and shout. Hallelujah. And what do we do in this place at the altar call? We run around and we shout and we jump and we fall over under the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Then that's what you're going to feel in this place today. In His presence is the fullness of joy. At His right hand are pleasures forevermore. If you don't feel like this, you can have this today. You can see all these people around you, what we're doing, how we're acting, how we're falling over, how we're speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah. The joy that we feel. The joy unspeakable and full of glory. If you don't have this today, you can have it. You can have this joy. You can have... All that we have in His place today. All the gifts of the Spirit. All the fruit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. I didn't know God really existed until I had the Holy Ghost. I knew there was something to this. But when I spoke in other tongues, God revealed Himself to me. And you can have that too. If you reach out. If you give your heart to this. If you open your heart and mind and, and worship God. Hallelujah. God has wanted it this way since the day of Pentecost onward. He's wanted us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. He doesn't want ritual and ceremony. Hallelujah. He wants worship in spirit and truth like the Bible says. He wants people speaking in other tongues. He wants people falling over under the power of God. Hallelujah. He wants the demonstration of the spirit and of power in this place. And you can have that today. Let's clap for him again one more time. Hallelujah. Speaking of getting drunk like the apostles did on the day of Pentecost. From Ephesians 5, verse 18 and 19. And be not drunk with wine, wherein in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. At huwag kayong magsipaglasing ng alak na kinaroonan ng kaguluhan. 
kundi kayo'y mga puspos ng Espiritu, na kayo'y mga usapan ng mga salmo at mga himno at mga awit na upon sa Espiritu na nag-aawitan at nagpupuri sa inyong mga puso sa Panginoon. Amen. So what does it say? What does it say? Be filled with red horse. No, be filled with tang line. No, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Be filled with the Spirit of the living God. Open your mouth and receive it today. Just open your mouth wide. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. The power. If God, everybody's pretty quiet. Let's, let's keep shouting to the Lord. Let's not bring him. I remember when I first got saved, I saw a sermon on the internet. I was looking at different sermons. And I saw a title. We're not as drunk as we're supposed to be with the title. And I thought to myself, is this really a Christian sermon? We're not as drunk as we're supposed to be. How do you praise God? I didn't understand at the time what he was talking about. But the best drink we could ever have is here. It's right here, right now, hallelujah, to get drunk in the spirit of the living God. To drink wine, to drink deep, hallelujah. Praise God. But some, some still have this fear, this trepidation, this resistance, this hesitation to the manifestation of the spirit of God. There are some here that are coming to this church not because they want to touch from God but because their family is making them come. That is what the Lord has told me. That, that, that the people that are like that are stoic and solemn and tahimic and to themselves. Hallelujah. The Lord wants everyone to open their heart and mind to Him. The Lord wants everyone to open their heart to the Spirit of God. Amen. To feel after God, Spirit. Hallelujah. When we worship Him, when we, we close our eyes and focus on Him, hallelujah, that's when the Spirit reveals Himself to us, hallelujah. It's time that we give, them, give ourselves to this, hallelujah. Let's not be like the other people in the Bible that were doubtful, skeptical. They, they didn't believe, hallelujah, the spiritual, the supernatural power of God. Here's another example of that from uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 41, 42. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had, for he had only one daughter, about twelve years of age, and she lay at dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. At narito, lumapit ang isang lalaking nagnangalang Jairo, at siya isang sinunog sa sinagoga, at siya nagpatir nagpatirapa sa paana ni Jesus, at ipinamamanhig sa kanya na pumasok sa kanyang bahay. Sapagkat siya may isang buktong na anak ng babae na may labing dalawang taong gulang, at siya ay naghihingalo. Datapwat, samantalang siya ay lumalakad, ay sinisiksik siya ng karamihan. Okay, sister, if you could continue in verse 49. 49, no, 49. Samantalang nagsasalita pa siya ay dumating ang isa na mula sa bahay ng pinuno ng sinagoga na nagsasabi, patay na ang anak mong babae. Huwag mong bagabagin ang buho. Datapuan na marinig ito ni Jesus ay sumagot sa kanya. Huwag kang matakot. Manampalataya ka lamang. At siya ay gagaling. Amen. At nang dumating siya sa bahay, ay hindi niya ipinahintulot na pumasok na kasama niya ang sinumang tao, maliban na kay Pedro at kay Juan at kay Santiago at ang ama ng dalaga at ang ina nito. At tumatangis ang lahat at pinanambitanan ang dalaga. Dato po sinabi niya, huwag kayong magsitangis sapagkat siya ay hindi patay kundi natutulog. Yes, at tinawanan nila siya na nililibak na napag-aalamang nag, siya'y patay na. Dala po at tinignan niya sa kamay at tinawag na sinasabi, Dalaga, magbangon ka. At nagbalik ang kanyang espiritu at siya'y nagbangon pagdaka at kanyang ipinagputos na siya'y bigyan ng pagkain. Yes, amen. amen. And, and then first, I'll read that in English just 52 and 53. What happened? When Jesus came in the house and told them, that she was just sleeping. And all wept and bewailed her. 
But he said, Jesus said, weep not. She is not dead, but sleeps. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. These Jews, they mocked Jesus, thinking that he couldn't raise her from the dead. They had rather say that she was that she would stay dead. What is it? Mamalibak? They scorned Jesus. Hallelujah. But with his supernatural presence and power, he told that little girl to get up. And the power of God was manifested itself. And she came back to life. Hallelujah. If you believe that, can you say amen? amen. amen. The power of God is here to heal, to deliver, to strengthen us. Hallelujah. Amen. To fill us with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. The demonstration of the Spirit and of power we're going to have amen. in this place today. Let's lift him up right now. Hallelujah, amen. Jesus. Glory. I felt after last Sunday's service that God wants to do even more in this place before we move to El Rosario. That there's going to be more healings and more signs and wonders, more demonstration of His Spirit and power until we move. Hallelujah. He wants everyone here today that has never spoken in other tongues to speak in tongues. Amen. He wants everyone that may have thought they spoken in tongues but are not sure that has a doubt to speak in other tongues and be sure that they have. And for those who haven't spoken tongues in a while, in six months, to be revived in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And you can have that today. For those of you who fit in these categories, please come up. When I ask for people to come up to the altar in just a, just a few minutes, hallelujah, praise God. I wanted to stress before we do that how important the Bible says it is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And let me stress how important it is to our salvation that we have the Spirit of God inside of us. And the only way we can know that we have the Spirit of God is if there's evidence. Is there something to show that comes out of our mouth? Hallelujah. That's how we know we receive the Spirit of God. From Romans 8, verse 9. But if you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he have none of his. Datapot kayo'y wala sa laman, kundi nasa sa Espiritu, kung gayo'y tumitira sa inyong Espiritu ng Diyos. Datapot kung ang sino may walang Espiritu ni Kristo, siya'y hindi sa Kanya. Amen. Siya hindi sa Kanya. You are not His if you do not have the Spirit of God living inside of you. You do not belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. That's, what, that's not what all churches are teaching, but that's what the Bible says. That you don't belong to Him if you haven't spoken in other tongues and received the Holy Spirit. Do you want to belong to Him? Do you want to belong to the Lord Jesus Christ? The Bible says, ask, seek, and knock to receive the Holy Ghost. Like Sister Bell's mom did. Amen. Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it will be opened up to you. Ask, seek, and not to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is what our Lord was talking about in Revelation chapter 30. Excuse me, chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup or eat with him and he with me. Narito ako ay nakatalong sa pintuan at tumutukto. Kung ang sino man ay dumating ng aking tinig, guminig ng aking tinig, ay magbukas ng pinto. Ako'y papasok sa kanya at hahapong kasalo niya at siya'y kasalo ko. Amen. So Jesus is standing there knocking on your heart. Knocking. Will you open the door? Hallelujah. Oh, will you say, I don't believe this speaking in tongue stuff. I don't believe this supernatural power of God. I don't know why these people are, are dancing and shouting around here. Hallelujah. But you can know. You can have that gift right now. You can have that gift today. Hallelujah. If you believe that, can you say amen? amen. Ask, seek, and knock, and open the door by worshiping God, by closing your eyes, by calling Him on Him.